All right. Hello. Hi. I was just outside and it was really warm. I... It, it is here in Michigan too, but it's really windy. <laughs> That's okay though, we'll take warm. <laughs> yeah, it's like over 60 degrees, which feels like spring. <laughs> the snow is melting, it's great. Yes. <laughs> so... Actually, the cold front is gone for good. It, it, winter is gone for good? At least the cold front hopefully is gone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there's some people still kind of coming in, but I'd like to get started. All right. Okay. Can everybody see my screen, the, the slide that's up here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think I'll just get started. It's going to be a little. Um, I might have to, you know, as I let people in, it's going to be, might have to be a little choppy here at first. But anyway, let's get started. And um, yeah, so what I am going to talk about today is how to make your website your star admissions assistant. So um, yeah, let's get to it. Here we go. So what I want you to do is imagine what your perfect admissions assistant would be. And I, um, you know, it'd be great to even have an admissions assistant. I know um, I never did when I was an admissions director. So, um, but when you think about it, you know, you want some, you want a great first impression of your school. Um, you want, you want this person um, to be friendly, intelligent, professional, organized, all these great things to answer questions, to take messages, to provide tuition information and to schedule tours based on your availability. Um, so the perfect employee, right? You know, this would be great. And, whoops, the, um, what I want you to do now is imagine that this admissions assistant works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wouldn't that be great? So this is what your website can be. Okay, so there are really two components here that I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about your website and then I'm gonna talk about automation. And these two components work hand in glove to make your website your star admissions assistant. And um, you'll find out more here, let's go. So why your website matters. Now, I think we all pretty much have a good handle on this. Um, we know it's important to have a solid website, but um, I think it's always good just to go over this. So more than ever, obviously now, pe parents are researching schools online um, and your website is often the very first impression that a prospective parent has of your school. Um, and it is, you can think of it as sort of the self-service virtual tour before you even have a chance to give a tour. Um, this is what they're looking at. So the other important part of your website is that it is, it's really the hub of your school's online presence. Now, all of your other digital marketing, you know, if you're posting on social media, if you're running Google ads or Facebook ads or sending out an email campaign, they probably all drive the readers back to your website. I'm sorry, people keep coming in and I keep having to admit them here. Okay, um, so, so if, if you're doing all this work, you're doing all this work out on the web and online and through advertising and everything to to pique people's interest and to encourage them to take the next step, which is probably go to your homepage or go to a landing page on your website. Now, if they get to that page on your site and your site doesn't do what it's supposed to do, if it doesn't um, educate them, if it doesn't answer their questions, if it, you know, it doesn't give them um, the steps to take the next step is if it's not obvious, then all of this other work that you're doing is for naught. So that's why your website is so important because it is, it's the hub. It's where every, everything comes in um, in terms of your online presence. 
The other thing to, to know is that over half of your parents now are probably looking at your site on their phone. So that's kind of gets to be a startling statistic. Um, when we at Neato Marketing look at where um, you know, leads are coming from for in general, um, not even just for Montessori schools, but in general, it's way over 50%. So um, this is why it's, it's it not only, it, it doesn't only have to look good on a phone, it has to be really functional on a phone. So. Okay, so the next thing to think about with your website is that you have to put on the hat of a prospective parent when you're thinking about what to put on your website. And so many sites that I see, the school leads with all of their credentials and it's all about them, it's all about the school. And that's kind of, you know, um, it's important. And, but what you have to think about is a parent is coming to your site, they have a problem that they need to solve. And that problem is they need to find a school for their child. And so, what questions do they have? And so these questions are the things that should be top of mind when you're looking at the homepage of your website because this is what the parents need to know. So they wanna know, does this school have a program for my child? I have, I have a two-year-old, you know, is this school gonna work? I have a nine-year-old, um, does this school have a program? You know, that's the first major question that you need to answer and you need to answer it really clearly. Um, and the second question is probably how much does it cost? Now, once, you know, a parent gets that, those answers, you know, um, is, does the school have a program for my child? Is it affordable for me? Then what is Montessori anyway? You know, a lot of parents don't know. So, so you really need to convey some um, important points about what differentiates Montessori. Who are these people? You know, again, this is where now you start, you should uh, communicate who you are, you know, your staff, your credentials, all of that. Those are really important things to have on your site too. Um, then what do other parents think of this? This is really important. Um, do you have testimonials that you can show on your site? Social proof is very powerful. If someone's reading about it and they're you know, a little unsure, and then they boom, here this testimonial pops up that says, you know, this was the best decision I made for my child. Um, those are really powerful. And then obviously, how can I find out more? What's the next step? These are the questions that parents have um, that you need to answer and you need to answer them on your homepage. And I just said that. So all of these answers should be on your homepage. And the reason is, because if you think about when you're looking at a phone, now people don't really look at websites that much, at least I don't on, a, on my phone. If, if I'm gonna sit down and look at a website, I'll, I prefer to look at it you know, on my laptop or whatever. But if they are looking at it on your phone, think about when you use a phone, what do you do? You scroll, right? You don't go up to that little menu in the top right corner, left corner and click on that and you know, go down. Um, and you might, but generally the, the normal mode of using a phone is you scroll. So your homepage can be pretty long, um, but it should, and it can answer these questions, but it should be kind of a scrolling thing. And it can still look good on a laptop or a desktop and a phone. And that's um, what a well-designed website um, should have. Okay, so here are some points about what to have on your homepage. Be very, very clear about who you are and what children you serve, what age children you serve. So here's an example. This is our demo site um, right here, a Montessori school for children ages three months to 15 years. That's pretty clear, right? There's no question. What is, what is this place and what ages is, do they serve? So, that first question, does this school have a program for my child? Boom, that's answered, right? Front and center. And clear over clever wins every time. So, you know, beautiful Montessori quotes and things, you know, all these things are, are beautiful and wonderful, but 
a parent who doesn't know anything about Montessori, who has, you know, a two and a half year old and they're looking for, you know, a preschool program for their child, um, that's not gonna mean much to them. So just be really clear. The other point I wanted to bring out is uh, that there've been studies done and that if, so picture this, picture a parent is doing an online search, Montessori schools near me, boom, and say, you know, four results come up and yours is, you know, the, the first one. So they click on it and they get to your, they get to your site and they can't really tell whether, you know, you have a program, they have to kind of search around, they have to work for it. Um, and then they, they get kind of discouraged and they're going to go back to that ser those search results and click on the next one, right? So, and studies, what I was going to say is studies are that you have about five to eight seconds before they're going to lose interest if they can't find the answers to their questions before they're off to another site. So that's why we're kind of hammering this in that you just have to be really super clear. Include a schedule, did I miss a? Nope, it's include a schedule a tour button that can't be missed. So on all of our sites, you'll see this like also front and center. So the reason is that this, I shouldn't say just the schedule a tour, whatever your, your main call to action is, what do you want a prospective parent to do when they come to your website? What is the primary number one thing that you want them to do? So just imagine this, imagine that you are um, shopping in a store, you haven't been in there before, you're looking around, it seems really, you know, there's a lot of cool things here and you're ready to, um, you find something that's really interesting and you're all excited and you're like, this is really perfect, this is what I've been looking for. Now, um, I just wanna buy this one thing and you're looking around and there's no cash register. You can't find it anywhere. So. <laughs> How crazy would that be? You know, it's upstairs, you know, in the ladies' restroom or something. <laughs> you, you, your schedule a tour button is your cash register. It needs to be really, really prominent. Explain a few important differences about Montessori education. This is all right here on the home page. Now, just pick out a few. Don't overwhelm. Just write a short sentence about each thing. Um, emphasize benefits that Montessori has over conventional education. You know what differentiate. This is the this is. You know this is what sells Montessori, right? Um, and what you want to do here on the homepage is just pique the pique their interest so that they want to learn more. But you don't have to give them a ton of information here. Just pick a few points that are, that you think are really distinguished Montessori. Uh, I've also seen websites that have just like, I call it the wall of text. You know, you're going through a site and it's just, people don't read, you know, pages of text on a website, especially on their phones, right? So you wanna make sure that your homepage just has these kind of snippets of really interesting information that piques their interest so they want to keep going. Again, clearly identify your programs. Um, include the age ranges. Now, we all have slightly different names maybe for different programs, especially first plane programs. You might have infant, you might have neato, you might have primary, you might have young children's community, you might have children's house, and it's fine. Call them what you, um, you know, what you call them. But here you can see as an example, just include those age ranges underneath because children's house isn't going to mean anything to somebody who doesn't know anything about Montessori. Um, in my community, the town, the primary school, the public school, is in town, the primary school is the elementary school. So uh, for my school, we call it children's house just to distinguish it because it just is too confusing um, for our community to call it primary. So the point is include those age ranges. It's just really helpful. 
And then here, so here on your homepage, you have uh, just a at a glance view of your whole range, which is also really nice to show because you know someone who has a two month old who's looking at this can say, "Wow, this is a whole, you know, education all the way up through adolescence." Um, and then for each of these, you know, you can link down to your detail pages where you give much more information about the program, the time, you know, all those details that are so important. And to share a few testimonials, I, I, I already touched upon this, but um, again, on your homepage, it can even just be one, pick a great one, put it on your homepage and um, use genuine reviews from your parents. Uh, and, and what I like to do is to distribute them throughout the site. So, you know, have one or two on your homepage. And then if you have one that is really um, specific to, you know, your elementary program, put that on your elementary page. And um, that way, every place that someone goes on your site, then they're looking for information, boom, there's another new testimonial. So it kind of gets to be, um, more and more social proof for them about the strength of your school. Emil, can I ask you a quick question here? Yeah. Uh, these different uh, things that you went through uh, that are good and important information, there are, are you talking about having them all on this home page or the different pages? I'm talking all about the home page here. Yeah, I'm not sure how you can, how you're fitting all this content in, in the home page itself. Um, yeah, so it scrolls a lot. Let me show you our. Um, I see. So this is our demo site. Right. Um, so here, right here, here's a few points about Montessori. Here okay, is okay, okay. the testimonial. I Here's the I program. I understand. Yep. Okay. And then um, I can show you too how it would look on a phone. You know, because that's the thing. It has to look good on both, on all platforms. Again, this is what I just showed you. So show a simplified admissions process. Um, we all know that admissions is not just three steps typically. And, uh, but the point here is what you wanna do is make it very approachable uh, for, a new, for a new parent to, to look at that. And it's psychologically it is, Oh, this isn't really that hard to, to do. It's, this isn't you know that daunting. Um, and so take your admissions process and just kind of distill it down to to three steps and have the last one be you know a happy ending here. <laughs> um, we we know it's not always, but I mean this is this is the point of um, of encouraging them to start the process. And the the other purpose for doing this is that the first step is really clear. So. Uh, they look at this, you know, oh, here's the process. And, oh, this is the first thing I need to do. So this should be your true first step. And ideally this links to your schedule a tour, you know, pop-up or, or page. So it just, again, it's just, you need to be really clear. And, and finally, and this isn't necessarily on the home page, although the footer of your page should have your contact information, um, but you need to offer multiple ways to engage. So this is our contact page on one of our sites. Um, so email, you know, email, phone, um, a map, an inquiry form, you know, there's a tuition request. So <clears throat> because different, people have different levels of comfort reaching out in different ways. And you don't want, you want to cover all the bases. You don't want somebody to leave your site because, you know, I just wanted to send an email and I couldn't find out how to do that. You, you want to be able to, um, you know, offer, offer everything that's um, all the different ways you can be contacted. Now, this is an example of a footer here where the um, address is here, the, the email, the phone, the schedule a tour, you know, social, you know, connecting on Facebook. Um, and here's another example, a, uh, a white paper download is another way to engage with, um, with prospective parents.
The other nice thing to do, this isn't a must have, but it's a really great thing to do is to show your most recent blog articles. Uh, the reason for this is your blog becomes, it, it keeps your website fresh. So most of the stuff on your homepage is probably going to be fairly static, but the blog articles, especially if you're publishing on a regular basis, like weekly, um, it, keeps, it keeps something new on your site you know, every week. The um, blogs have a lot more benefits to them than just that. Um, it's a way to, to um, market your, um, your school in the sense of when you publish a blog, then you can send out an email to your, to your email list. Hey, we just published a blog, go read it on our site. When you could put it on Instagram, you could put it on Facebook. Um, and so the whole point being that you are constantly reaching out so you've, you've, you've got this person's contact information and now you're kind of constantly, you know, in their inbox, maybe once a week so that you stay top of mind and every email that you send, you know, it's like, hey, come back to the website and maybe schedule a tour or give us a call. So I'm not gonna go through these. I have a few slides here with a little more details about the website. They're in, they're here, but, um, I'm in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but um, again, your program pages, you know, one page per program, you don't really need to do more than that. Um, in fact, if you have a blog, your blog is a great place to be publishing more detailed information about different aspects of, of Montessori or anything. And, um, you just don't, you don't, you don't want to overwhelm with too much, too much information here. Um, again, I just, this is a example of the navigation that's from here. Um, again, include those age ranges right there in the navigation. So it's, it's always, um, it's really obvious there. Um, keep it to digestible chunks of information, include the times of your programs include a testimonial if you have it, and always a link, always, always, always a link to schedule a tour. Um, about Montessori content on your site. Don't make assumptions about what visitors know. Um, and it's especially important to have content on your site that describes Montessori, because by helping people understand the broad strokes of Montessori and what sets it apart, you're positioning them to qualify themselves, which can save everyone a lot of time, right? So you want families contacting you who are interested in what you are offering, right? And it's always an education process, but um, if there's a family that's this, this just doesn't resonate with at all, then you don't wanna waste either of your time. So that's the, um, the real purpose and strength of having Montessori content on your site. Okay, about your school, um, this is pretty standard uh, for all sites, but they really are interested in learning about, um, about your school and what sets you apart. And staff profiles are really, are really powerful. Uh, if you have a you know a headshot and a little bio about each staff member, that can it, it's sort of when they do come to your school or when they call you, they have a they have an image of who you are and they know a little bit about you and that just kind of breaks the ice and um, connects. It just forms a connection, um, so that's important to do. I just um, wrote a blog a couple of days ago about photography and graphic design. And um, if you have um, school picture day every year and a photo photographer comes in, make sure your staff lines up too. Get them in line, get their headshots so you can get them on your website. Testimonials, we talked about this. Um, it's a great idea to just have a, uh, a routine of once a month, once a you know, every couple of weeks um, to put it in your calendar, say, who can I ask today for a testimonial? Uh, the, just in testimonials in general, not even necessarily related to your website, 
if you have a process of asking for testimonials on a regular basis, you'll build up positive testimonials. And that way, you know, if you have 30 great testimonials and then the one, you know, comes in that inevitably comes in um, that's not positive, it's kind of drowned out by all the positive ones. So the best insurance against a bad review is to have a bunch of good reviews already. Um, okay. I kind of already covered blogs. Um, so I think I'm gonna just skip over this slide. Bill, can I have one question about the blog? Yeah. I mean, we have blog on our website. And what I understand is that based on the tracking from MailChimp, that people are hardly clicking on the blog. Uh, you know, so I'm not sure why. I mean, I thought that it would be of interest, but so this is the thing actually we do not know. We have a blog, which I think is refreshed frequently, but we're not getting much, much clicks on it. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that comment out. Yeah, yeah, and it's tough. I mean, people get a lot of uh, email and um, are you using our emails? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I think we're yeah. using the one that uh, working with you guys for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can take a look at that and see if That's there's fine. anything yeah. we can do. But yeah, I mean, you know, too, I mean, everybody's inboxes are inundated. <laughs> so <laughs> I think what you find is the parents who are interested will click on it. You know, and, and by that, I mean, if there's somebody who's interested in your school, and sometimes it doesn't even matter if they click on it or not, but the fact that that email showed up in their inbox, um, in a way the blog almost just gives you an excuse to email your list. <laughs> and so, yeah. hey, you know, Crab Apple Montessori, oh, the, oh, that's right, I, that's the school, I was gonna look into that school. You know, just the fact that it pops up in their inbox um, yeah. is helpful. Okay. And back here to technical basics, um, mobile responsiveness, obviously I've talked about that, has to look good on a phone. Um, it has to be fast, um, load fast. Same reason why, you know, if somebody happens upon your site and they can't find the answers to their questions right away, if they have to wait for your site to load, they're gone, you know, you've lost them. So just make sure it loads quickly. Um, secure, you know, this little, lock up here needs to be there. Uh, it's just, even if you're not collecting, you know, you're not clicking credit card numbers or anything like that, but you are, you know, you do have forms on your site. And I think it just, it gives parents just a sense of security. And it, it actually makes, just makes your website look much, much more professional or it's kind of a given. And if it's not there, that's a, that's kind of a ding on your, on your site. ADA compliant is, is, a, is a great thing to have. Um, that allows your site to be, that's this little um, app that we have here on our sites, which just allows um, parents to, who have visual impairments to be able to see the site, that you can adjust contrast and highlight certain items, um, change the colors if someone's, you know, has, is colorblind. Um, that is a, um, something that's becoming more important. And, you know, I'm sure like the corporations have to have this on their site um, soon. And, you know, no nobody's gonna come after a Montessori school, but it's still a really nice thing to have. Okay, I'm gonna just take a break here. Is, does anybody else have any questions about what I've covered so far? I have a quick question, Camille. If you ask someone in your community to um, give you a review, do you sometimes feel like they feel singled out? And maybe if they don't want to do that, they might have a hard time saying no. But would you put out a general ask for the, in the newsletter for reviews? Or what do you recommend? Um, well, I think that if, usually if there's something that has, it's a little different. Um, if there's something that has happened recently that when you know that that parent is is happy with your school, you know, like anytime someone comes in and says, you know, 
or emails and says, oh, wow, you know, Joe had a great time, you know, had a great day today. I just want to let you know, or um, so something positive. Um, maybe you had a parent ed and a couple parents, you know, came up to you afterward, you know, that's the time to ask them for a review. Um, and, you know, some of them might feel a little bit on the spot, but I don't know. I think in general, I mean, I was a parent too. <laughs> I'm still a parent. Um, you know, I didn't feel put out by that. You know, most parents want to help the school. You know, if they're happy with the school, they really want to help them, you know, succeed. And and they know that having positive testimonials is is one way to, to help. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My take, my take on this is that I um, mean, we have asked for reviews from parents, but usually by the time we ask, we pretty much know about these parents. I mean, how they feel about the school, whether or not the type who will be willing to go an extra mile. So we have a pretty good sense uh, that it would be fine to get, to ask them. So we just wait till we are sure, and uh, and usually we haven't been disappointed. Ellie. Um, I have a question relating to the blog. I missed your uh, um, first part, but I, we use a blog very often. We try to do once a week or twice a week. We take pictures of the whole school. We um, uh, go on one topic and we try to explain what Montessori in our eyes. And we tell the parents, please go to the blog to see your children's pictures. That's, that's how we run that. My hope was two. One is to create more engagement in the blog and the website. And the second, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it doesn't do that. Just correct me. I, I, I don't know. That's my question. Whether it does create more uh, feed into your website to make sure that it comes up. And the second one is um, we, we're trying to do it through the blog because our parents are saying we're getting too many emails from you and we want to see what you're doing. So that was trying to satisfy that need. And also new parents can go to the blog and see kind of the vibe of the school. Mm -hmm. So would you, is that what you recommend as a blog or do you have a different purpose for the blog? I think that is a fine purpose for the blog. I, I would caution you. So that's really a, the, the target audience of that is your current, are your current parents, correct? Yes. So, um, you want to also have some blog articles and these can be intermixed. I think that's fine where they're more maybe educational and something that a prospective parent would find interest in because um, you don't, and I understand, you know, there's also ways to have a blog, you know, you can have two blogs. You can have one that is targeted towards current parents and then one that is more targeted towards prospective parents and maybe it's the prospective parents one that you put on your homepage. your homepage is really valuable real estate um, and it's your number one online marketing tool so um, you could have your blog for parents it can still be on the home page um, you could just call it something different um, call it news you know, school news and have that there as well. And it's, then it serves the same purpose. But um, I guess what I'm saying is it's fine to have that, but I don't think it takes the place of a blog that tries to educate prospective parents about Montessori and different aspects of Montessori. Okay. And in your, in, 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 in what you do, we have um, WordPress. Do you support WordPress in your practice or? Needle mark doesn't you? Yeah. Yes, we 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 would support WordPress. Mm -hmm. okay. Our sites are no longer WordPress sites, but um, we we have some clients with WordPress sites. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, so I just like to mention. Well, we yeah. we um, due to Zoom, uh, each classroom we have five classrooms here uh, created their own Facebook page for the parents. And we've continued that, and that's where we put on pictures of the students who, who are, uh, it's only privy to the parents who are in that classroom, obviously. But we found that to be, our parents really like that. They check in and see. When we explain um, uh, what work they're doing and the purpose of the work sometimes, so it's just a little bit of an educational update, but they're getting to see their um, child 
you know, more often that way we found, at least it seems to work. Yeah, that's a great way to do it too. Um, yeah, and all of these, of course you have to, I don't know if you do photo releases. I, um, yes. But yeah, you obviously can't put any, post any photos of children who, um, so. We use our Facebook group, which is a private group for parents to share among themselves. Mm -hmm. We have a school Facebook uh, site as well. Okay. And the blog, we wanted parents to go in and in and in. So does that create the engine that, I mean, the, 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 the traffic we wanted into the website? That's the only traffic we see except from candidates or prospective parents. Right. I don't think it necessarily, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. If it helps your SEO, you mean your, how you, how you show up in searches? Yeah. yeah. Um, I suppose that it might, I'd have to actually check on that. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I would have if, to think about that. If it does, that. then it, 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 it's a very big in, in incentive to me to make sure that the blogs are spectacular mm -hmm. and work with you guys on kind of uh, supporting the WordPress of it. Well, certainly, I, I guess what I was thinking of, if you have the same visitors that are constantly, vis your current parents that are visiting your site, um, you know, it's certainly not going to hurt your SEO. Um, but if um, how you show up in your in searches, um, but it's when you have other, you know, when you have links to your site from all over the place coming into your site, that's what really, really helps your search engine optimization, especially, you know, if you can get a link to your site from an article somewhere else, that's, and especially if it's like a newspaper article or something, that that's re what really, really helps. Um, yeah, so the other thing, uh, so your parents, so your parents like, like that format of having the news letters sort of be on the site rather than in their inbox? Well, you can look at them. Yes, they're very short, concise. It might have just one paragraph. We don't give them a whole lecture. There's no whole thing to read. They want it short, sweet. And what is it that you're showing us? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tech is yes, we love it. Yeah, good, good. Uh, my um, experience has been that you don't, <laughs> that parents don't necessarily proactively go, oh, I better go look at the website for X, you know, whereas if it shows up in their inbox, at least you know that you've tried <laughs> to get it to them and get them to read it, right? So, um, you know, going to the website is an additional step, but if that is working, for your family, that's, that's great. Um, they know maybe they, they kind of get trained that they need to go look there to find out what's yeah. going on, right? We'll send an yeah. email reminder once a month with a link. We make mm -hmm. it very easy for them. Link exactly into that page. Not even You don't even have to search for it. Right, and the benefit is, oh, where is that email about you know X? I, I can't find it in my inbox, but I know that if I go to the website right here, it'll be here, so right. yeah. I, yeah, it's great. I think both both methods have you know do both. We you know, send them a paper one too for you know it's like you would just you want them to read it. Um, that's the important thing. So okay, moving on, automation, um, the engine under the hood. I like to call it, which doesn't exactly go with my admissions assistant metaphor here, but um, this is what really makes your website work for you. Um, and I'm just gonna, I just wanted to put this slide in. Um, we call our admissions automation software, the Monastery Admissions CRM. And a lot of people don't know what, what is CRM? You know, it stands for Customer Relationship Management or Manager. Um, it's an industry term that refers to software designed to facilitate and automate communications with customers. So uh, HubSpot is another one. There's a lot of them out there. Um, and so it's just becomes the, um, you know, the, the, the acronym for this type of application. Um, so your customers obviously are the families and prospective parents you serve. So you can just think of it as, you know, it's a software application that um, facilitates communication with, with your families. 
um, why automation matters. Um, it's what allows your website to work for you. It's, it's what makes everything um, tick behind the scenes. Um, it ensures that you follow up with every prospective parent. Um, so every inquiry through your website gets a response. It collects and organizes parent contact information. It reminds you to take action. Um, you can track them through your admissions process and you can organize communications in one place, you know, email and text messages. Um, so that, you know, if you have multiple people that are handling admissions or maybe you just have somebody answering the phone, um, they can go in and look and see who this contact is and add a note to it or, um, you know, text them or whatever. So it's, it's just a communications application. So this is what ours looks like, um, one, one um, piece of it here. So you can automatically respond to parent inquiries. So I already touched upon that. Um, you can organize the parent contact information and communications. So this is an example of a contact um, view. So this is me, <laughs> this is um, information here about, you know, name, email, all of that is right here. Um, the communications here is in the center pane. So emails and texts, they're all interleaved um, chronologically for any communication that has happened with this contact. And then over here on this pane, you can um, see what they've done. You can um, assign a task to yourself to follow up with them at a later date. You can make notes about them. You can see any appointments that you would have with them. Um, you can customize the information that you um, save for each contact. So it's really it's a really powerful you know database basically for managing all of your uh, parent information. Camille, how do you upload the parent information? Do they sign up and upload it because? We already have them sign up to Transparent Classroom, so. Yeah, you can um, export it out of Transparent Classroom and import it into this. Easy. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so it can, it's the engine that is doing this work of, of emailing your parents when they, your prospective parents. So say they fill out um, a tuition inquiry form and they wanna know what your tuition rates are. It's this, it's the CRM that this this form actually is the CRM here, and it's embedded on the site. So when they click request to tuition information, that triggers the CRM to send an email that's customized based on the information that they've sent here. You know, hi, you know, hi Ellie. You know, thanks for requesting our tuition information. Um, you'll find it attached to this email, and and you can customize um, it completely. Um, what what happens when this form is submitted? I mean, one question here, with regard to CRM, when somebody comes for a tour, does the CRM application capture, for example, how they found out about the school, whether it's through the internet or referral or anything else? Is that capability there to to incorporate in CRM? You yes, you can customize that any way you want. If you want your, uh, I think schedule a tour is no. Um, if you want your schedule tour button, you could form, you can put a, a field on that form that says, how did you find out about us? Yes. Um, so as far as tracking, we also, if you're running Google ads or Facebook ads, then we have that tracking information too. So we can count that as a, as a conversion, um, you know, from your, from your ad campaign. So, but if they've, you know, not everybody comes from ad campaigns. So, you know, if you have a drive-by that saw your school and then went home and, you know, filled out a form, you might just have to ask them how they found out about you. A good percent of our uh, uh, enrollment is from referrals. So our two main ones are from internet searches and from referrals. So mm -hmm. we would like to capture the referral part too somehow. And I'm not sure if that's built into the system or something creative have to be, has to be done in the CRM system. Yeah, it would be, 
I'm just thinking if we could automate that somehow, but I think in the short term, the easiest way to do that would just to have a field, you know, did somebody refer you and have them enter their name in the form that they complete. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is shows just how the, um, the email nurture kind of looks from on the back end. This is in the CRM. Um, so you can send a series of emails. So let's say, for example, someone requested tuition information and the CRM put it in their inbox. And then a day later, um, they got an email that said, you know, hey, welcome to our school, um, you know, and introduced yourself a little bit about your school. And then a few days later, you know, you talk about the history of your school. And then again, a few days later, you know, and each of these emails is completely customized by you. And it includes, um, you know, you have their name, so you can personalize it. And um, the purpose again is to just get in their inbox um, so that you can continue to encourage them to take the next step. You can also set these so that if they do reply, say they do schedule a tour, you have links in these emails to schedule a tour, the campaign will shut off so that um, it's not going to keep you know, emailing them once they've actually um, responded. These, these can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be. <laughs> Schedule tours and send reminders based on your availability. So again, this scheduling capability is our CRM and it's embedded on the website. So if someone clicked on schedule a tour, this pop-up comes up and the times that are available, you configure. So this is the, the big window of when in general terms that you are able to offer tours. And you can see here, for example, this one is set to just be Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. This is just a screenshot, so I can't click on this here, but um, actually I can show you in the, in the real one here, which looks pretty similar. So, you pick the time and then again, they just fill out their information. They might, they might enter what program in. And this Wally here would be where you could put a field in here that said, you know, how did you hear about us? Or did someone refer you? And then you'd have that information. And then when the, the tour is booked, that triggers, um, well, I back up one second there. The, um, this is your overall availability and then it's also connected to a Google calendar, your Google calendar. So if you maintain a Google calendar and let's say you had a special event on a Friday that was taking up the whole day. So you block that off in your Google, cal Google calendar, then the CRM goes and checks that too first before it um, gives the availability for tours. So it's never gonna book a tour for a time that you're not um, available. I have a quick question. That's sure. okay. Um, so I use one right now um, that allows us to book tours for different levels since we have toddlers, we have early childhood, we have elementary and I do group tours. So does your uh, tour scheduling accommodate uh, tours for different programs? Because obviously they're on different days and different times. Yeah, sure. You just have to have a Google, Google calendar for each one of those. Um, yeah, and you can set up as many calendars as you like. Okay, no, I mean, we we do have a, a system right now that does accommodate that with a drop down menu. So when the parents go to the website, they pick the, the, the um, actual program that they're looking for from the drop down menu. And then when they, um, and then only those dates with those tours pop up. So if it's early childhood, that would be Thursday mornings at 930. If it's elementary, that would be Wednesdays. Is that? Yeah, that's exactly what how it could. I, we might not be able to. We could do a drop down from the main menu, but um, each each program can have its own pop up like this with its own times, and it has, and then it would be attached to a Google calendar. So if you had your, you know, primary tour Google calendar and then your elementary or whatever, um, but they are completely separate. So um, 
yeah, it, it, we definitely can make that work. And we have schools that do that. Um, Thank you. My, my soul, you're on the call here somewhere, right? I'm putting you on the spot. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, you have some schools that are doing multiple calendars with our CRM, right? For different programs. Yeah. So yeah, they can have uh, uh, separate calendars, uh, separate Google calendars, or if they want, they can also use one Google calendar and then we can just, uh, you know, separate the availability in the CRM. So they can have like multiple calendars in the CRM, but it's only using one Google calendar for their admissions. Oh, right, right, that would work too. Mm -hmm. Camille, we use the, your system for our tours and we have our differentiator is simply um, virtual tours and in-person tours. And so one calendar follows the other and, and I've controlled which times I'm available for each. And we, we can only do in-person tours at 4.30 in the afternoons once all staff and students have left campus. And so that's the only slot that opens up once a day for that. And then there are other time slots available depending on my schedule, um, the things I know that are consistent in my schedule. Um, and it's worked great. Good. Yeah, that's another great, um, great application for it. Um, so yeah, it's very flexible. It's, I, I like, <laughs> It's almost flexible to a fault in some ways because it's, um, you know, you can do so much with it that you have to, you know, figure out what is it that I really need to do, but we can almost always make it work for you. So, um, yeah. All right. And the final piece is the um, admissions pipeline here. So this allows you to have kind of a, just a high level view of the state of your admissions pipeline. Um, these are, you know, what we call opportunities, which are prospective students, and um, you can customize what this pipeline looks like, you know, what the different stages are, and as, you know, say a, a tour schedule comes in through your website, it automatically is created here in your um, admissions pipeline, and then as they move through, you can just click on these and drag them to the next step in your process. So I think this is really, I wish I had this when I was doing admissions because it just gives you such a nice um, snapshot. You can have multiple pipelines. You can have, um, you know, one for each program. So again, it's very customizable. And uh, finally, we have been talking a lot about, um, you know, getting people's contact information and building up that all important email list. And I just wanted to point out that once you have that email list, there's so much you can do with it. Um, you can, you know, if you're having an, um, an open house coming up, you can design a nice, you know, the CRM has this nice ability to design what I call fancy emails. I even call this one a fancy email. Um, and, you know, like MailChimp. Um, it takes the place of MailChimp. So you can, um, you know, send out uh, email blasts about your upcoming open house. You can use it for your, for newsletters, either, you know, to prospective parents or to your current parents. Um, we've talked about the blog a lot. Um, one thing that we have done for some parents, you know, we don't really talk about internal marketing that much, but we've put together an email nurture for the parents of um, parents of students, uh, second year primary students, who you, um, you want to um, educate them about the importance of the kindergarten year so they stick around, right? So, um, you know, say you have re-enrollment in January, you can, you know, have this email nurture set up to go to just them and maybe one a month, you know, October through December and just, you know, points about why it's important to stay for um, that third year to complete the cycle. So there's a lot you can do that you can text through this. So you can text all, you know, snow day, you can use this to text all your parents, you know, there's a snow day today, whatever. Um, there's a lot of, um, uses for the CRM that go beyond just admissions. 
Okay, so Janet, we don't have too much time left. Um, she wanted to review her website because I offered that we would do that. So we'll just take a quick look. Are you still here, Janet, on the call? I see you, yeah. Um, so these are beautiful images here. Um, but again, so I'm looking at this and I have a, let's say I have a three-year-old. How do I know what ages um, you serve here? And what if I don't know anything about Montessori? Um, maybe, maybe I don't even know that Montessori is a type of school, you know? Um, I mean, I'm kind of going to extreme here, but, um, you know, just, you have to be really clear right here on the, on the front um, about, about who you are. And kind of the, the general consensus about having images, slideshows on your homepage is that they're not the best thing to have because they kind of get mesmerizing and the message is lost through the slideshow. So one really great image that's static is, is the best way to go. So this is great, schedule a tour, you know, pretty prominent. Um, and here you talk about who you are which is good, but again, you're, um, you're kind of leading with yourself and rather than um, you know, answering that for all important question about ages. So here you get down to it, which is good. So this is great right here. I would just recommend you know, bringing it up a little higher here because you think about when you're on a phone, um, let's see if we can see what this looks like on a phone. That's always the first thing. So this looks great on a phone. Okay. So this is great too, um, but I might put this on the page that's more about you rather than the home page. The homepage is really valuable real estate. So you wanna have, like I said, information, you know, um, maybe take this information about what a Montessori is and just and kind of break it up into three chunks of, you know, what differentiates Montessori and, and put that here. And then, um, you know, I would rather see rather than these, I'd rather see one, two, three, how to apply. And then I'll just go back to regular, um, oops, where am I here? Testimonials are great. Let's see, what else do we need to look at here? Looks good on a phone, which is important. Blog, nice. See these dates? This is great because, and the other point about having a blog is if you can't commit to at least having a, a new article at least once a month, then don't have a blog. It's worse to have, you know, a blog that's, you know, having articles that are a year old sitting on your homepage. Um, yep, yeah, you have all your contact information here, which is great. Um, I would say just to make sure that that one, um, this schedule a tour, just to make make it, you know, learn more. What happens when I click on that? So that's just more about you. But again, that's your most um, valuable real estate right here. Put your schedule a tour right here. <laughs> and um, maybe include a little bit about who you are right here. So anyway, it's 2.30. I don't want to go over too much. Does anybody have any any questions? Or we kind of just didn't have too much time for questions after here, but um, I hope this was helpful. I don't know if anyone is not using the CRM, but um, we uh, completely moved over in January and it's been a fantastic experience. So um, I highly recommend it. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> All right, thank you, Janet, also for 
sharing your site. <laughs> Camille, I wanted to just ask you, um, I had heard that all school websites needed to be ADA compliant as well. Um, is, do you have any knowledge of that? I believe that they do. And um, I also don't know, I'd have to look to see how well that's really being enforced in reality. Um, I think it's something that we all need to keep in mind and migrate towards. And that's why all of our sites are. Um, so I'd have to check and see if there's, you know, I don't think anybody's gonna really come after you, but it is, um, you know, it is becoming more important for sure. Are you, do you know of um, laws in place for it? I don't know of any laws in place. I know that we were getting a call for a while. Um, if I, and this is vague, this is about a year and some ago. Um, and I think it was from a law firm that was trying to talk to our head to sort of like say specifically you're non-compliant and we can cite you for that and we can shut down your website. And so we ducked to those calls until we moved our website over to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> sort of a ambulance chaser uh, law firm. Yeah, exactly. Like they're, exactly. They're going around finding sites and not a lot are. So um, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's um, like, a, a, it's important and um, you know, I. I just don't think that they're going to start coming after, you know, especially smaller Montessori schools um, first about it. So, um, but it also is really important and helpful for people who have, um, you know, visual impairment. So um, it's a good, that's why we include it. We just, um, it's on all the sides. Susan has her hand up. I don't know if you have a question. Maybe not anymore. So sorry, you answered my question, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, uh, we're a little over here, but um, thank you everybody. I hope, like I said, I hope this was helpful, some food for thought. We'll put the slides as we always do and um, post them with the video. All right, so enjoy the spring weather. Does everybody have spring break coming up pretty soon? We have four feet of snow coming this weekend. <laughs> yeah, even, well, even the Washington Post has an article about the weather in Colorado. Okay. Well, yeah, those are kind of fun in, you know, December, but not so much in March, in my, in my own opinion. <laughs> so I'm usually ready for spring, but now, so. Anyway, and we set clocks ahead this weekend, so we're getting there, so. Um, oh, I have not been keeping an eye on the chat. I apologize for that. Um, Jan asked, we don't use WordPress. We use a platform called Duda, D-U-D-A. Um, and that's where all our sites are on. Um, do we have a video describing our CRM? That was from Susan. Yeah, we do. I can point you to it. I'll send you an email about that. So. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.